Hey guys, Jill here. Welcome back to Whispering Willow Farms. I'm in my kitchen this morning, uh, pretty early actually, but we are going to be talking about sourdough. Y'all are gonna help me make a loaf of sourdough. This is something that you guys have been asking me a lot about. Uh, I really wanted to kind of do it a few times before I felt confident enough to teach someone else how to do it. And it's also, a 24 hour process to make one loaf of bread. Uh, so I wanted to make sure that I was gonna be able to be home, uh, teach you guys well. So the first thing I want to talk to you guys about is the starter. So in order to make your sourdough bread, you have to have your sourdough starter. Now some of you guys may know that I tried to create my own starter, a Gloria. I spent probably around three weeks um, trying to make a sourdough starter. I tried three different recipes. They all failed. I have been told that it is really hard to try to make a starter uh, in the winter time. Temperatures play a part in that and I was just really not successful. Uh, if I'm being completely honest, it was just not a successful thing. It was also really discouraging. You know, I really wanted to do sourdough. I ended up getting a starter for my friend Sean and using that and making my bread. I highly recommend if this is a new process to you and you're kind of just intimidated by the whole thing, trying to create your starter is a lot. I would recommend if you know a friend who has a sourdough starter ask to borrow some of theirs. Uh, you can even buy it online. I'm good friends with a girl named Katie at the Urban. Uh, she's the Urban Ladybug and she sells starters on her website. I'll list them below. Um, it's really reasonable price too when you think about uh, what all goes into making a starter and the time that goes into it. So I fed my starter last night at 10 p.m. and what you do is whenever you get your starter you'll just put equal parts of water and flour so I added 50 grams of water 50 grams of flour. Now my house is cool because it's the winter time so I actually end up mixing my 50 grams of strong white bread flour my 50 grams of of water and with the original starter and I stick mine on a heat mat in the kitchen and it seems to work really well. Um, I'll show you guys some of the things to look for. So ideally you want to use your starter when it has reached its peak uh, but if it goes too far so say my starter actually ended up coming up here and then I didn't use it at, at the right time when it was at its peak, it's gonna fall completely back down and I'm gonna have to completely refeed it and start that process again. Um, but I can see in here, there we go. See all those bubbles in here? I know that this is an active starter. I know that it could go a bit more. Usually right here is when I use it because I know like, okay, it's at its peak. This is a prime opportunity before it starts to fall, but this has so many bubbles in it. I know it's active, so this is what I'm gonna use. What you're going to need for this recipe, you guys can tweak it as you learn. Uh, this is something that I've done too. I will be dabbling into tweaking uh, the flowers and things like that, but right now I'm just using uh, King Authors white bread flour. I'm just using filtered water. I'm trying to just keep it as basic as I can through the learning process. Then I can start adding in, you know, rye flowers or wheat flowers or something like that. And I would recommend while you're learning, just make it the easiest on yourself as you can. I found that that made a difference. Um, I made several loaves before I even started experimenting with adding different flavors and things like that. So we're just gonna walk you through the generic bread. Uh, we're not gonna add any flavors to this. We're just gonna keep it as simple as we can. So let's head over to the other part of the kitchen uh, and start adding the ingredients together. All right, a couple things you guys are going to need. You are going to need your bread flour, like I said. You're going to need a measuring cup because we'll be measuring out our water and our flour. And then you will need some sort of kitchen scale. Now just those square kitchen scales um, are, you know, probably if you have a kitchen scale laying around is what you have. This is a scale I have that actually has a bowl with it, um, but I'm just gonna use it um, and just stick my bowl on here directly and it works really well. I'll try to find this one on Amazon. I don't actually think this is the best scale for what I'm using, but I know that the price point was pretty well. Um, I'll try to find some and link them down for you guys, but you are gonna be working in grams. So make sure that you just set your scale uh, to grams. That way you know, okay, you're not getting the recipe off. 
All right, you will need a big bread bowl. So this is something um, that is actually really important. You want a big bowl because this is going to need to double in size and things like that. Um, so this is just a big bread bowl that I have. Uh, you're going to measure out Typically, they say like 50 grams of starter. I like that sourdough taste, so I do 100 grams. So this is something that there is that ability to play with. Um, if you've ever tasted sourdough bread and you don't really, it looks like sourdough bread, but it doesn't have that fermented taste, they probably just used a lower uh, amount of their starter when they you know, were making their loaf. I personally really like that. So I use 100 grams. It is my sweet spot. You can play with that. You can even go down to 30 grams up to 150 grams. Like there is flexibility in there depending on how much starter you have. Um, but look at that, you guys can see all the bubbles in there, this is good. Let me grab my spoon. And we will start measuring out. at 100 grams so what you're gonna do I do not have very le much uh, left in here I'm just gonna close this back up and stick it in my refrigerator and this is good whenever I get ready to use it again I'll just add 50 grams of water 50 grams of flour let it activate and then use it so it is really nice once you have a starter you can use that starter till the end of time so I like that um, you know usually they're like 20 25 dollars to buy a starter or something and you think oh my gosh really but knowing that you can use that starter over and over again it's like oh well it's really not that bad now I have my water and you will add your 350 grams of water what I'm going to do is just zero out my scale um, and then add it and then we'll just loosely stir it so I went over which is no big deal I'm just gonna take my spoon and start taking some out I was trying to not dirty up so many dishes usually I'll just take it and measure it separately uh, that way I don't have to start doing what I'm doing right now <gasps> all right I'm now at 350 grams of water turn you guys around and show you what it looks like so here we have it you're just gonna loosely start trying to stir this together you're just really wanting to get that starter to where it's just not in these huge chunks. So now I'm going to measure out my 500 grams of white bread flour. I am going to measure this just in the cup and not actually in the bowl just to avoid any error that could happen. You'll also add uh, four grams of salt, which is about like one teaspoon. Honestly, I kind of eyeball this. I know a lot of people, I'm like, that's kind of low salt for a recipe. So I just have my salt uh, little shaker grinder and I just kind of eyeball that. Um, it's just going to be dependent on how salty you like your bread. So that's not like, oh, you have to do four grams or anything like that. There is a liberty to play just based off of your taste buds. I typically just do these in increments of 250 grams. So 250 grams is about two cups. Um, and I'll pour this in loosely, mix it, pour the other 250 grams in and do the same. I have found that it's easier just to kind of roll your sleeves up and get your hands dirty. If you're trying to mix with a spoon, uh, it's just not going to do as well. You certainly don't want it to be like this smooth ball or anything like that, but you want all the flour to have been mixed in. And I just found that using your hands makes it a lot easier. Alright, so this is what it should look like as you guys can see it's just kind of this rough ball of dough right now and that is totally fine you just want to make sure that the flour is mixed in well then you're just gonna take your plastic lay it over the bowl and we're just gonna let this sit on the counter for an hour so I just set my alarm for an hour and then I'll come back 
Now I do want to take a minute and just tell you guys some of the things that I learned the hard way. Say you decide to mix your dough with a spoon instead of your hand. If you do not immediately clean up the sourdough when it dries, it dries like cement. So if you wash your hands off in your sink and they're still part of the sourdough immediately go through run it down the drain if you get some on your countertop immediately wash it off with warm water otherwise it's seriously it's just like concrete so my timer just went off and we are going to begin our first sets of lifts and fold now the first time that you are making uh, your sourdough bread the roughness of this dough we'll have to lift and fold it which i'll show you guys better in a second you'll have to do that about 25 times but after that you do not have to do it that many times that is just like really kind of getting your dough in a good shape uh, then we'll set an alarm and we'll be doing it every 30 minutes uh, over the course of a few hours and then it's just maybe like you know make sure you go around every part of the dough so maybe like six times um but right now just since we are trying to get our dough into a good shape we'll probably do it around 20 25 times all right and literally what that looks like is you're going to take your fingers like this go all the way down to the very bottom of the dough you're going to lift it and fold it then you'll turn your bowl and you will continue to do this for the remainder of the 20 to 25 times you'll kind of start to tell too uh, right now my dough feels extremely lumpy uh, once I've kind of lift and folded these several times the dough becomes much more smoother now if you were to add in things uh, if you're doing a flavored sourdough this would be the time that you do it so when I do my garlic and rosemary I add it in right now uh, during the lift and fold process kind of get a feel for this and know like what your dough needs to look like the more that you do it and I find that that's a lot easier too is just kind of going off the look and the feel of your dough versus however many times you need to do the lift and the fold all right so I have performed that step you guys can see it is a much smoother bowl than it was before I'm going to cover it up and then I'm simply just going to take my phone and set the timer for every 30 minutes. And I'm going to do this over the course for the next few hours. Typically, I do it about four hours. So every 30 minutes, I'll come in, lift and fold for four hours. So typically, when you're making your dough, you want to do it in that sweet spot area. Uh, I have been caught uh, in a few situations where I've been up all night doing this stretch and fold process. Uh, you also want it to bulk firm overnight so typically uh, I have started this at the wrong time ah, per usual no surprise there to me uh, you want to start this process about four in the afternoon and if you start it around four then you're pretty good at like having that bulk fermentation process be at night and you can just let it you know sit overnight on the counter uh, for me I'm gonna have to tweak it a bit uh, since I did start it at a different time I'm just kind of gauging everything at this point but it is important getting yourself on a good schedule if you're starting this recipe I started early in the morning don't do that <laughs> try to start uh you know go ahead and have your sourdough active and start the part where you're mixing your sourdough with your water and your flour and you're building your dough around four o'clock in the afternoon so i'm going to be performing my last set of lifts and folds now typically if you're doing this on that four you know you started at four o'clock and you're on that schedule uh, you would do your last lift and fold put the paper on it and just leave it on the counter overnight you can even typically what I do in the winter time is I'll stick this on the back of my refrigerator where there's that vent and it stays kind of warm um, but what I'm going to do this will have doubled in size so if you're leaving it overnight by the time you come back your dough will have doubled um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna check on it I'm gonna do my last set of lifts and folds I'm gonna cover it I'm gonna leave it and then I'll just come check on it around bedtime and see where we are and if it hasn't doubled and it's not showing those active bubbles like what I want I'll go ahead and just let it continue to sit overnight until I wake up in the morning um, if I think it's well and doing well by the time uh, bedtime rolls around then I'll just go ahead and start the next step so it is much later in the day. I'm still working on the sourdough. I did just want to show you guys though, uh, kind of what it looks like and some things to keep in mind. Now, if you're doing this on the time schedule where the bulk fermentation is going to happen overnight, 
obviously you don't have to worry about these things but if you are like me and you're where you need to run through it and get it done during the day these are just some things I thought would be helpful all right let's see so as you guys can see, it has doubled in size. Usually when I let it ferment overnight, uh, when I pull my plastic off, my paper wrap or whatever, uh, it will stick to the top of it and that's when I know it's done. So I'm actually gonna go ahead and let it rise a few more inches uh, to the very top of the bowl. But I definitely think that this is gonna be ready uh, well before like later tonight. It's four o'clock now, so I think probably in the next hour or so it'll be ready now i did turn my heat mat on uh, just to help with that process speed it up quite a bit but you want it to just look like this obviously it has risen in sides um, i can see some bubbles starting to happen here which means fermentation is happening so these are all good things uh, and good sides to look for my bread is finally where we can go on to the next stage i am very very pleased with it i'm also really pleased that it's five o'clock in the afternoon and i'm able to start this next process instead of like 10 or 11 o'clock tonight so, so let me turn you guys around and show you what the dough looks like and some of the things to look for in this section as well all right as I was mentioning I like it to stick to the top um, it just it's kind of my sign you know and I'll just go through and lightly pick this off and throw it back into the bowl all right, as you guys can see here, there's lots of bubbles, but more importantly, it looks uh, really airy. If you're using a bowl that is clear, much like this one, you should see all those air bubbles that were in uh, the starter, like you saw in the jar uh, earlier this morning. So that's something to be mindful of. We are going to now do our last set of lifts and folds in here. It could, should look kind of like a spider web, Typically before I start that last set of lifts and folds, I go ahead and grab my banton. Now this is important when bread making. You do need one of those. I'll link them below. They're actually pretty inexpensive on Amazon. And this one came with the banton, the liner that I'm actually not going to be using today, a dough scraper, and then something to score your dough. Uh, but you're just going to go through and liberally flour this with brown rice flour. I use Bob's Red Mill. Um, it is important that it is brown rice flour and not just your regular uh, bread flour, but I have been in a pinch before and used my bread flour and found that it worked as well. You really just want to make sure, if you guys can kind of see here, that you're getting it down into the creases really, really good. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and start filling up my banton with all the flour. When you transfer the dough over, we'll go ahead and make sure that the dough itself has a lot of flour on it too. So there's a lot of wiggle room in this step. Just get it as good as you can get it. And usually I, I find it okay. You can even wet your banton before. Uh, that way your rice flour kind of sticks to it. Uh, just like sprinkle some water on there. That's actually not a bad idea either. All right. So mine is liberally floured as you guys can see. I'm gonna attempt to do this one-handed so I can really show you guys. All right, so again, you're just gonna start the very, very bottom. It should feel just super airy is kind of the best way I know to explain it. There we go. So you'll just continue this all the way around your bowl until you feel like you have a good ball of dough formed. And you guys can see here, that was that spider-like um, kind of veininess I was talking about that you should see in your dough. Uh, during that bulk fermentation that is exactly what you want to see right there as you guys can see i have finished this part now we are going to transfer it to our bait and you just want to make sure that the smooth side is uh, up so i'll literally just put this side down i just usually pick up the bowl and dump it So it is 
not as uniform as I prefer. Uh, so I'm just gonna go ahead and do another quick round of lifts and folds. This is when you're going to though lift up the side of your dough anyways and just be adding flour. You wanna make sure that you floured the top. So while I'm doing that, I'm just gonna go ahead and kind of shape this dough up a bit better just to my liking. All right, now we are done with this part. All right, there we have it. Now I will just cover this back up with my beeswax. And this will go into the fridge for what is the final process before you bake your sourdough. Now you can leave it in the fridge for as little as three hours or as long as 24 hours. Now this kind of played out to my advantage because it's 5.30 here, so I'm just gonna pop it in the fridge and leave it overnight. And then when the morning I get up, I'll score it and be able to pop it in the oven. So it should be fresh for breakfast, which is actually really, really nice. I have left it as little as three hours and I have left it overnight. Night. I've never left it in the fridge for up to 24 hours, but certainly if you are going to work for the day, you can leave it in the fridge all day or overnight or anything like that. There's a lot of flexibility with, that comes with this. And although the steps kind of seem intimidating, there is really a lot of wiggle room. Uh, so I'm gonna pop this into the fridge and I will see you guys in the morning. Good morning, you guys. I just pulled my dough out of the refrigerator and it looks great. Uh, everything I wanted it to look like for the final proofing. Uh, so now we're going to move on to the next and last step of making sourdough. Now I would go ahead as soon as you wake up in the morning or whatever you know your baking schedule's on when you pull your bread from the refrigerator go ahead and start preheating your oven to 450 degrees because it's going to need to be completely preheated before the dough actually goes in there um now i have my uh, just cast iron Dutch oven. Most commonly used to bake sourdough bread is enamel pots. Uh, so if you have that, by all means, just use that. I think I'm kind of one of the different ones who uses my Dutch oven. I've just always dreamed of baking bread in my Dutch oven. Um, I actually really like baking bread in the Dutch oven. I like the way uh, that it turns out, just the shape of the bread and everything. Uh, I'll link some options down below. I just know that like most commonly used is those kind of oblong uh, enamel pans, but uh, this is what I'm going to use. Now, also what is recommended is to put just like baking parchment paper uh, in here. I don't like that. Uh, what I don't like about that is when I put the parchment paper in here, the top, like the very top of my loaf gets the color that I want, but the outside where the parchment paper has kind of like covered it in a bit, for my Dutch oven in particular, it uh, doesn't get the color that I like. And then if I continue to bake it longer, the bread gets overdone and I'm still just not achieving that color. So I've just got some Pam cooking spray and I just spray my Dutch oven. You can do this if you're using an enamel pan as well. Um, I have found that it doesn't really affect the bread at all. I am just able to get that color that I want better. Uh, nothing sticks, it's just, I like it. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and just spray our Dutch oven and then we're gonna start to score our bread. Now I liberally flour or uh, spray this because I do not want it to stick. So I kind of probably heavily spray just because I tend to worry about silly things like that. Um, all right, so now that that's done, we're gonna start scoring our bread. This is where you will need a sharp, clean razor blade. Uh, they have these on Amazon, these little scoring tools. And this is where you're gonna get to be creative. I just spent a lot of time on Pinterest just looking at different patterns you can do. Uh, you can be super, super basic and that is totally fine. I kind of like the idea of playing around with patterns and what that looked like. I like to be able to see what it looked like before I baked it and after I baked it because those are drastically different. Uh, so I just would get creative with this. Keep trying uh, different patterns, it's really fun. Um, 
So that is what I'm going to be doing today is just playing around. Uh, this one I've done before and I actually it turned out really pretty. Uh, but there's lots of liberty in what you do here. Alright, here's my good bread. You guys can see flour still doing really well on here. I'm going to just start and make a line down the side. Which this could be all you do. You could just do this one line down the side and call it good. Uh, I am going to do some other patterns here. Brick dough's kind of got kind of hard up there, but. Alright, so you guys can see I've just kind of put a tree like design over there, scored it over here. I'm continuing to wait for my oven to warm up. But right now, this is probably the most trickiest part to me is transferring here to here. <laughs> So the oven actually just gave me that golden light that it is ready. But I do want to talk about a couple things uh, that are really important. I know this is your first loaf of sourdough. You're going to be super, super excited. You're going to want to check on it uh, while it is baking. It will bake for 50 minutes. But it is really, really important. Do not open up your oven uh, whatsoever. You want to keep it closed as long as you can. Really just let that bread do what it's supposed to do. Uh, same with like when you're baking anything really uh, even though it is really really tempting trust me I know you need to keep it in there and just let it go I keep mine in there for 40 minutes and then I open it and take the lid off and cook the remaining 10 minutes without a lid on um, most of the time it's pretty true that it, it's that 40 minute mark but I will that's the only time I will open up the oven uh, and it's really just the color I know what color I'm looking for and it's not so much at that point like how long it's been in the oven it's the color that I'm trying to achieve but I really don't want to go over that 55 minute mark I certainly do not want it in there for an hour uh, so you guys just kind of play around with that and toy with that uh, but we're about to pop it in the oven so stay tuned all right I have just pulled my bread out of the oven so I baked it for 40 minutes uh, with the lid on and then 10 minutes oops let me turn that off 10 minutes without the lid as you can see that is the golden color that I really prefer in my bread now we are immediately going to take this and transfer it to a cooling rack so I have just plopped mine down on our cutting board because that's just what I had available but look at all the scores that we did it's kind of an uneven loaf if you guys can see this side's bigger than that side but that's probably just how I form the dough and that's really not a big deal so now you want to let it set for one hour and this is really important uh, if you try to cut into it now your bread is just gonna fall uh, if you try to move it or you know say maybe you're baking bread to take somewhere for the holidays making sure that it rests for the hour is really really important you're going to hear that your bread is popping and that's that's what mine is doing right now it's popping it's distributing everything uh, which is exactly perfect so usually what I do is just set it on the counter kind of forget about it until the afternoon then I'll come back in and cut into it and show you guys what it looks like all right it is officially time to cut into our beloved sourdough usually what I try to just you know if you don't look at the time and you don't get it like right on the hour mark just go through and fill it if it's no longer warm then you're you're typically fine you do want a good bread knife uh, this is actually kind of key we had nathan's great grandmother's bread knife that we were using and it was extremely old and i was like honey now i will keep this in the family but we have got to get a knife that is going to cut bread um so i'm just going to cut one end off of this and kind of show you guys this is actually a loaf that i'm taking to a friend's house later um, but let me move you guys down some and we will cut into our bread You 
guys see all of those holes? That is exactly what you want. You want to be able to kind of squeeze it and then it just bounce right back up. So this is a successful loaf of sourdough. Look at all that. Oh, I am so excited that I got to walk through this with you guys. Y'all got to hang out with me in the kitchen for a few days. I hope that you guys feel prepared and confident to make your own loaf of sourdough. If you guys have any questions, by all means, just leave them below. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me today. I'll talk to you soon.